previously on TV Tuners. You call this a breakfast burrito? Only has six eggs in it. Swanson, help! I, I'm trapped in the Bolivian prison for human trafficking! I have a song stuck in my head, and now you're all gonna hear it. All right. I'm in. I would die in a thousand wars for you. Hold on. Is that... a flag? And now, TV Tuners continues. And welcome to TV Tuners. It's a television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive in the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co host and uh, helpful guy who's trying to uh, take me, help me with his mission. He's a good guy. He's definitely not lying to me. The cat is in the cradle. And the silver spoon? <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, I, sorry. Uh, uh, I can't think of anything right now. Shit. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, we, we do. You think that guy, like, do you think that guy was improvising them? No, I think it was written. <laughs> like, the CIA has just, like, a little notebook, a little pamphlet. Yeah. I think he's, I think he's reading from a list. The pig is in the blanket. Yeah, and he's like, and the hot is in the dog. The horse is out of the barn. He said, and the dog is in the doghouse. <laughs> um. Anyway, with us is always, of course, our other co-host and uh, annoying lesbian co-worker. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yo, Rain. I'm a really uh, fleshed out... <laughs> hilarious character who everyone really wants to be around yeah and wants to, uh, to have on their on their tv screen and they want to <laughs> see and hear me Whoa. now to be fair i could have made you the guy the the guy who was also equally annoying <laughs> or you could have made him arnold schwarzenegger no, no that's my rule. you have to pick on the the uh f- the female character because this is a sexist podcast You're right that's right yeah true I feel like she's, like, her character's, like, damaging to gay rights. Let me tell you about, uh, women, fellas. Hey, yo. Okay. Yeah, that, uh... Should I bust the notebook out? Yeah, you should be taking notes. I don't want to Alright, so, so, so let me, let me lay this on you about, about women. Uh, some women, not all women, have, uh, they do not have a Y chromosome in their body. Whoa. I'm writing this down. Isn't that pretty insane? I can't believe it. They're different? Is that why they're yeah. only as half as tall as men? Because they're missing half the genetic information? Yes. Oh, I've been wondering that. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty hardcore. It's a it's a miracle that they actually are able to survive like that. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Women are so helpless. Now, uh, Keo, you're back with you're back this week. What? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we we thought you were dead. What are you talking? Oh, you know, I, okay. I get. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm not Keo. No, I'm <laughs> Ocean Keo. <laughs> What's the difference? Yeah, let's go ahead and get on to the. To the rest of the show. Uh, I would like to know what makes Ocean Keo different from regular Keo. Are you made of water? Are we really going to harp on this? Like, I, mean, I don't think it's... Re- I we're just asking a question. You could answer it. I, I mean, I don't really want to get into all that. It's, okay, it's kind of personal. 
It's like All right. complex. Is that what you mean? I mean, it's not, but I don't want to talk about it. But we will be referring to you as Ocean Keel for the rest of the series. Yeah. The series. I'm Ocean, Ocean Keel. Yeah, we'll definitely remember to do that every week from now on. So uh, let me tell you my backstory now. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, the Keo, you know, is, he's dead. He's like, he's completely and utterly dead. That submarine imploded. And uh, according to Reddit, that means that the temperature inside of it exceeded the temperature of the surface of the sun. Oh. And uh, you know that's true because it was on Reddit.com. Well, I mean, we could, like, check it's a different source. No, uh, I think that's about what? the only source you need. Okay. Yeah, so anyways, I, I live on the Titanic. And when I say, like... On the Titanic, I mean, like, in the wreckage. I'm, like, a like an ocean guy. Like, I go under the water. So, I, I saw, like, regular Keo die. I was like, wow. So, I figured, like, you know, my life down here sucks pretty bad. Oh. Pretty, you know, not, not good. So, I was like, hey, you know, I can just go ahead and replace him. I look just like him. And you sound just uh, like him, which is very yeah. important. Yeah. I don't really know, like, anything about his life. His family is very upset and all that, but... Pretty sure, like I got his passwords. He had a rem- he, he had them written down on like a paper. So I'm like, <laughs> Classic Keo. So, do yeah, you have like, a podcast on the ocean? Yeah, I have a podcast. Oh, what's it called? It's like it's like uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't get it. It's it's whale sounds. It's pretty good. Oh, that makes sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you you get me. I'm yeah, finally able to relate to somebody for once. I mean, would people in the ocean get it? Uh, yeah, about that. You you ever hear about the ocean apocalypse? Oh, oh no. Yeah, you you wouldn't have heard about that. You, yeah, okay. So, was this on like ocean yeah, Twitter? My... Was it all over ocean Twitter? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we do not have Twitter. That's yeah, that, stupid. That's... Why would there just be an uh, ocean version of Twitter, Swanson? I don't know. Are you it's an probably idiot? like an ocean Facebook. Yeah, there's ocean Facebook, but no Twitter. It's called Blubber because it's, <laughs> it's underwater. Okay, and that translates to. Okay, that that tracks. I oh guess. yeah, that makes sense because that's <laughs> that's what are whales, whales but birds of the ocean. We don't have birds under the ocean. Like, they're seagulls, but they live, like, on top of the ocean. Well, yeah, and whales you know, are like, like the birds of the ocean. Yeah. They're noisy. Right. I think that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anyway, the ocean apocalypse happened, huh? Oh, yeah. The ocean yeah. is rapidly acidifying and being filled with plastic. Yeah. My father died because he had like one of those those soda, like plastic things around his neck. Oh, oh boy! Oh Jesus! That's no good. I don't know how. Like you know, as you can see, I'm I'm human sized. So was my dad. So you know. Well, I guess it, I mean you know all it takes is one. Okay. Well, I'm really glad I can stay on the podcast. I figured after I explained that you know. You know, I'm not actually your friend and, you know, all that stuff that you would not want me on the podcast anymore. No, I feel like it would be great to have you on uh, as like a continued sort of... We were actually talking last week about how we need someone who sounds like Keo, and you do. Yeah. So it's kind of perfect. Can you do an impression of Keo in a submarine about to implode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me do, let me do the background noises. Boop. Boop. Wow, well, I'm really glad this crew knows exactly what they're doing. I feel really, really reassured that, uh... Wow. Wow, it's just like the tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, Stare was the only one to listen to it. Oh, that was a tape? Yeah. I've seen yeah, somehow the there was a tape. Old, it was on the black box. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, the subs definitely have that one in particular. <laughs> they found it right next to the Logitech. 
The owner of that submarine was oh, had the best equipment on board. <laughs> True. And he's a oh by the way by the way most of the people on the submarine are, survived. Oh, what do you mean most? Yeah. Well, I think just your friend died. Oh, so all the rich people are still alive. Yeah, and they and they live in the Titanic, and they told me I couldn't come back. <laughs> well, Ocean Keo, I'm glad to have you on the pod, and let's never speak of any of this again. Okay, sounds good. And you Except for every time Keo. we call you Ocean Keo. No, uh, oh, you're... sorry, my warders bond. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And if you're listening to this and you have any quips, comments, questions, foresights, otherwise, well, you can send them to us. And on our email address, and we'll read them aloud on the podcast. Now, what's that? What's email? Email's like uh, you send us stuff and via the the internet, and we like look at it. I, you probably have like C mail. <laughs> yeah, C mail. Uh, Is that an S or a C? Uh, yes. That's S. S E M. Okay. Okay. A I L. Okay. No. It's- not too different. Uh, yeah, you can send them to us and we'll read them aloud. You, uh, all you got to do is go over is send them to TV Tuners Podcast at gmail.com. What's that email address, Keel Ryan? Wait, is he here? No, uh, sorry, you. You're he's Ocean Keo. Ocean Keo. Oh. Okay, you scared me. I thought he was back and he was going to like. <laughs> what would he do? Shoot me with a harpoon. <laughs> Why would he do that? Are you susceptible re- to harpoons? Ex- that's my... W- uh, oh, no. No. Oh. Uh, anyways, yeah, it's tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. That's right. You could be like Geo, who sent us this email. Uh, this was from a little bit ago, as we'll find out in a second. It's titled, What's Good, Internet? Boys. It's a shame what those motherfuckers did to Waypoint. Boys. A low down crying shame. The best lefty cast in the pod game. Gone like a hot dog left in Stairmaster's vicinity. Let's have a moment of silence for Waypoint. Alright, let's get back to business. There's a hole in the lefty video game podcast space now. A hole large enough to drive a Cadillac through. And all that money and all that fame could be yours for the taking. If, that is, the game bros could get woke and clean up their image. So what do you say? Clean up the old public image? Say some shit about landlords, say some smart shit, and the unwashed millions of, ca- of castless lefties will show up to your door faster than Stairmaster can eat a hot dog. Strike while the iron is hot, boys. And by iron, I mean dank-ass kush. Uh, he, fo- he has a couple follow-up emails that say simply, think about it, boys. <laughs> All that money, no more television. Emails from people, Dude. what ain't me? All that money. That does sound appealing. <laughs> Do you guys know about the legendary uh, Game Grabbers uh, podcast? We've we've heard a couple of rumors about them, but I don't think they're real. I really don't want to talk about this. <laughs> Wait, well, well, why not, Stare? It's a bit. It's a bit of a sore spot for me. Hmm. Oh. I did a couple of collaborations with them, and it didn't turn out great. Oh, huh. I didn't know about this. Yeah, that was like yeah, the, a year ago at least. There was a game grabber's cassette tape that uh, fell down to the Ooh. sea before the ocean apocalypse. Oh, oh, they had them. They yeah. had a. They made their podcast into like a mixtape. Can I have that back? I mean, can I have that? Uh, I mean, the Ocean Tribunal is in possession of it. <sighs> How is there an alive. apocalypse, but also a tribunal? Well, the tribunal well, was before the apocalypse, dummy. So yeah, why yeah, do they have I, it? Bef- I mean, they... they to, I don't know... To do judgment! It, it, to render judgment on things! This is the land. What are they rendering, rendering judgment on? Our litter! That, yeah, litter. It was littered into our ocean. Okay. But there was a whole, there was a whole thing going on with that. Uh, you know, it kind of accelerated the apocalypse, honestly. But I mean, my mm. point is, it was a pretty good podcast, in my humble opinion. I think we should probably mm. uh, recreate that. Yeah, but I- obviously we need to go for more of a leftist edge. And as anyone who listens to this podcast knows, we're uh, we're centrist all the way. 
just constantly talking about the middle of the road issues like tax brackets. Let's uh, get let's let's rebrand ourselves, fellas. Reinvestigate nine eleven. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. What's that? Okay, so we have like these two really tall towers. Towers. Okay. Okay, and so like a guy, two guy, like a bunch of guys flew airplanes into them. Okay, so airplanes are sort of like whales that go in the sky. Oh wait, hold on. I think I understand what's going on here. Do you guys have eleven nine down there? <laughs> yeah, eleven nine. It was a, yeah, it was. It was a... <laughs> It was a big disaster, and that was the day the uh, terrorists won. The, the ocean terrorists. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, we have we have that sort of up here, but it was 9-11. And they oh, also that's... won. <laughs> that's pretty well, crazy. We, did, we haven't admitted to it. Uh, most oh, yeah, of we us admitted have. to it. Like, we, uh, we, we flew a white ocean flag. Oh, okay. Wow, that means the same thing down in air. Uh, yeah, it, it does mean the same thing. Okay, we 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 get the flags from your from your ships that sink. Now, did your uh did your ocean leader like did they invade a foreign country? Yeah, we had a whole operation into the Mariana Trench. <laughs> what happened? We wiped out all those dirty people down there. Oh, oh uh, okay, moving on. So I hope that answers your question, Gio. Yeah, uh, th- thanks for your input. I think this was more of a suggestion on Gio's part. Yeah, I guess you're right. Anyways, that's an, a- that's an answer from us. That's right. Uh, TVTunersPodcast at gmail.com if you got any of those, anything to send to us. Uh, and listen, with that out of the way, I have an important question to ask, one that I ask every week. What'd you guys watch? Anything fun, interesting, something you want to talk about? I watched uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Char's Counterattack, 1988, director Yoshiki Tomino. I think I've heard of this movie before. (laughs) It's peak. Yeah? Yeah. How would you describe the vibes? (laughs) It's goaded. With the sauce? Yes. That okay. was a char assemble was the craziest white boy to ever do it. To ever get it's it true. in. He was he was the true originator of White Boy Wednesday. <laughs> also I watched Extraction 2, another White Boy Wednesday movie. Now did you watch the first one? Yeah. Okay. And, I mean uh, they're on Netflix for free, why wouldn't I? Well, a lot of the shit's on Netflix for free. I mean, I'm watching it. Oh, I'm just, I mean... Well, look, Chris Hemsworth... There's not a lot of things where Chris Hemsworth would throw people at other people as weapons. Hmm, true. Okay. okay. I just don't remember you talking about the first one. That's why I was asking. Well, there was... A, anyways, there's like a 50... There's like a 30-minute single cut scene. Single take scene of him. Fighting his way through a prison, and then escaping from the prison, and then escaping more into the prison. Are there any... And getting onto a train. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he goes through a ton of hallways, and then he gets on a train. Oh. After a chase scene. And then there's helicopter guys chasing them. And he shoots down one of the helicopters, but then another helicopter RPGs him, and the helicopter lands some dudes on the train to get the guy they're extracting. Okay, so this is it's a good crazy. Movie. Yeah. Well, it's 30 minutes too long, but it's pretty good. Okay. Like, there's a sequence at a hotel, and you have the bad guy fighting him, but the film doesn't go in there. Where does it go? Oh, he gets away, and then they go fight in a church later. Mm. But it's like, why don't just fight on the top of the ch- hotel? And end the movie right there. Come on. Now, I also watched something you will all appreciate, I think. Oh. Dungeons and Dragons Honors Among Thieves, starring Chris Pot Prine and Michelle Rodriguez and Hugh Grant. Yeah, I was going to say, Hugh Grant's yeah. in this fight? <laughs> yeah, he's the con man who becomes king of Neverwinter. Uh, was it good? Yeah, is this a good It movie? was great. It was a fun delight. 
It's very oh. funny. Imagine if set pieces, great performances. What more could you ask for? Unfortunately, it did shitty in the box office, so we'll never get another one. Uh, maybe that's sure the best. Uh, but I had heard it was pretty good. Yeah. Glad to get confirmation from a co-host. <laughs> yeah, I watched uh, seasons one and two of uh, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Why? The... I love those kind of TV shows. I'm Ocean Kyo, not not the Kyo you know. The original oh, right. or the 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 old remake? The, the, oh, the original, of course. The I was gonna, I was going to ask if you finished Barry, but then I remember your Ocean Kyo. Yeah, I, I, I. What's Barry? Is that like a show about like uh, the Flash? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, thankfully. <laughs> you got the Flash down there. Well, yeah, yeah. he's fast enough to travel down there. Uh, I don't think that's a qualification, the necessary qualification for going to the ocean, Swanson. He can go down there if he wants. If it's stop him. Uh, yeah, Aqu- Aquaman did, t- did tell us about the Flash. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so Battlestar okay. Galactica, they got the space planes, right? The Vipers? They got Cylons. Yeah, great, great show that I did watch. Okay, tell me about it. What happens? In Does, it? Yeah, what's it about? Who's the main character? Uh, the, uh, uh, Gaius. Gaius. Did you watch anything else this week? No. And oh, I did okay. watch that show. I'm not lying to you. Battlestar Galactica starring Gaius. Spelled with a U. <laughs> yeah. And a Y. <laughs> not, yeah, like the Roman, not like the Roman guy. No, no. He's a guy. He's just a guy. All right. So that's what we watched this week. What about you, Swanson? Uh, I finally got around to finishing Beef. <laughs> Why? Uh, it got pretty good. I, okay. It evolves into a nice little show that uh, builds on itself until it gets to like a really tense final couple episodes. Um, I don't know. Apparently there are plans for a second season, but it would follow different people. So I guess that's potentially interesting. But, I mean, just leave it at this. It was good, uh, as it was. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely more, it's definitely less of a comedy than I think I was expecting. But uh, it does have some funny moments. Also, uh, mild spoilers, but someone, at some point, does get killed with uh, Panic Room Door. Nice. Like, is it like in Dread? Oh. Kind of. It's not uh, It's not shown quite in, as in detail. But mm-hmm. it's similar. Um, but yeah. That sounds uh, pretty hardcore. It's a good show all, overall. I'd give it a tune in. That's it for me. All right. And so I guess and that's that means... a tune out for uh, Battlestar Galactic, a terrible show. You should have watched Legend of the Galactic Heroes. All right. Well, let's move on to the news then, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, Paramount Plus has become the latest in a line of streaming services that is moving content off of its streaming service. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, yeah. Streaming service. That's like. Uh, God damn it. I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure that out because like. What do you got? Like netfish down there. Uh, Wait, I okay. You're gonna, okay. So para trout when you say plus. St- when you when you say streaming, <laughs> like we don't really respect streams in the ocean. Those are like little. You mean currents? Yeah, we prefer currents. Like those are much more oceanic than streams. Those are, those are like things that happen on land. You call it sh- current services? I guess is that what is that the equivalent on land? Stupid people sure. on land, dirty people. Well, this current service is the is taking uh, shows off of its uh, service and putting them elsewhere, or just. Letting them go. Most of them uh, like, seem to be going somewhere else, but we'll be talking about that in a second. 
do the they just do like a hat trick. It's just like it goes from one place to another, and then they make more money somehow from it. Yeah. So yes. uh, Paramount Plus is the latest to be doing this. Uh, it's currently going through a merger, apparently, with Showtime streaming service. And in order to facilitate that merger, they decided to just remove some shows that were on there. Um, at least that's what they say. But the real reason, of course, is that you get a tax credit for doing this. Why? Why would we incentivize getting rid of products and services? Well, you, the thing is, Keo, you got to make sure the profit increases. It's not enough to make a profit, but it's got to be more than the last quarter. Yes. Warner Brothers, for example, was had a 70% profit margin before they started cutting content. But why is there a tax credit for it? Well, they probably, because they paid the government to put that tax cut code in. Oh, you have a corrupt government, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's sort of a universal thing. Um, but yeah, Paramount Plus is joining the likes of, of course, HBO Max and Disney Plus and getting rid of some of their shows and just putting them somewhere else. Where, you might ask? Well, on certain what they call fast track channels, which are, think, uh, what syndication used to be. And that's pretty much what it is. It's just free, free TV for, for dum dums. I think uh, if you've ever heard of Pluto <laughs> TV or Tubi, that's where these will be. Shows it's like Tubi, it's Tubi. <laughs> Shows like uh, Tell Me a Story, which I think was a former episode of the show way back in the well, day. Uh, uh, is, is that the show that was like they had like fairy was, tale themes? No, I think that I think that was a show where the guy was the mayor of New York. Newark and was trying to get integrated housing. No, and that's Show Me a Hero, sh- and that was not an episode oh. we did. Oh. Uh, Keo had it right. It was like the, there was like a, we, we called it Chekhov's Pig, which, excellent memory from C. <laughs> did you absorb Keo's memories? Uh, we're cosmically aligned, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, your name is Keo, and you do look the exact same. True, and you, sound and you do the sound same. the exact same. Yeah, did you know that on uh, Full Moons, uh, Keo actually did become me? <laughs> what? What does that mean? But we recorded at least, like, five episodes on a full moon. Yeah. That was you? Yeah. The whole time? That was you, episode 100? Yeah. Huh. Are there like greater implications of this, or can we move on? I, I mean, just a little there probably Sorry. are, but do we really need to unpack them? No, that sounds tedious. Yeah, agreed. Um, anyway, these uh, these shows are going to these free services uh, as tax write offs, of course, and that's where they'll be for the foreseeable future. Uh, in the case of HBO Max, also, some of those shows are just going to Netflix. For some reason. Yeah, this will never make sense to me. And I don't think it would make sense if I was a, the original Keo either. No. Uh, well, you see, you got to make profit somehow. And I guess the best way to make profit is to, as always, screw over the consumer in some way. Yeah, j- just play like a... Uh... Underwater musical chairs with your property and confuse people and make them pay more money for the same thing. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, there's, um, I don't know, it's an, it's a very odd sort of deal going around that doesn't make any sense and makes me actively <laughs> dislike everybody who, who partakes in this. Our civilization is in decline we no longer know how to create we're just ripping copper out of the walls to pay the bills yeah true I mean we have lost the will to create (laughs) a society Um. based around burning 
<laughs> well, in the case of HBO Max, of course, they had to save all of that money so that they could release the absolute bomb that was The Flash. Starring Barry Allen. Yeah, a movie that Barry. actually would have saved them more money if they had shelved it like they did Batgirl. Anyway, uh, moving on, let's talk about something else that Warner Brothers executive David Zaslav has destroyed. Turner Classic Movies. You know, that channel that you would skip over because they were playing something that you didn't want to watch when you were a kid? Yes. Like The Perfect Storm? Sure. <laughs> uh, I don't know. When I was a kid, I, I did not uh, do any channel surfing. Although I do remember The Perfect Storm. <laughs> did you enjoy The Perfect Storm, Keel? Uh, All I remember from it is that they thought the storm was over, and they were like, yeah, <laughs> but then, like, it wasn't over. Yeah, and then they died. <laughs> was that in the trailer? They thought the storm was over. Yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't over. <laughs> yeah, I that know. would have been a big spoiler for the film. I haven't seen The Perfect Storm. But for some I'll... reason, my childhood brain was like, this is a movie that's important. <laughs> it's bold and half perfect. I need here. to remember what it's called. It's bold to have perfect in the title of your movie. It's, well, it's a perfect. It's the perfect movie. It's about. A, <laughs> it's about a storm. It's got George Clooney and Mark Wahlberg. Dang, it's got to be good then. Yo, th- yo, this perfect storm wouldn't go down like that if I was captain. But yeah, uh, Turner Classic Movies recently laid off about eighty percent of its workforce including top executives, all in an effort to, of course, save money. Um, Now, you could argue that maybe this is just another sign that cable is uh, slowly in its death knell. It's slowly dying. It's in its uh, death knell phase. But uh, You can say that about a lot of things. True. Uh, a a, A lot of people have been saying this. About various different things, especially. True. Well, I don't want to get into that. I mean, I don't want to make this podcast about me. Yeah, I would hate for that to happen. <laughs> uh, luckily, three, uh, three kind of big names, kind of well known. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they've yeah. stepped in. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Adolf Hitler. Joseph Stalin. <laughs> And you guessed it, Mussolini himself. Ah, uh, I mean, he kind of—he's like the third. He's like the third string. Like he's the Ringo. Uh, I don't think those guys really got along. Or well, I mean, we don't know that t- these three directors get along either. But um, the 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 three directors in who have come to the the rescue of Turner Classic Movies are, of course, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, and of course. Everyone's favorite, Paul Thomas Anderson. (laughs) I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Uh, Apparently the three of them have placed an emergency call to Warner Brothers CEO David Zaslav. And uh, they're they're saving the show. They're saving the whole thing. They're essentially... So here's what's going to happen. They're going to curate the network's programming by including... by guiding what uh, what's played on it, uh, essentially acting as unpaid volunteers to keep the show to keep the network afloat. Wow, king shit. Yeah. Is um, why is this a uh, TV channel so precious to them that they would go to these extents? Well, it's a way of showcasing movies that aren't always available on streaming services. You don't. You, 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 it's it's about the movies, Kiel Ocean Kiel. Oh, they they just care about movies a lot. Yes. Yeah, they really like movies. Are they gonna take this as an opportunity to just promote like their favorite movies and their yes! movies? Yes, I hope so. Movies? Well, <laughs> I don't think they need to promote their own movies. Yeah, I think all three of them are pretty well known. I don't know if they need. Except to for like that. maybe Kundun, he might need. That might need a little oomph. Uh, yeah, I don't know. True. I've never even heard of any of these people. Well, I mean, have you heard of like Steven Seesberg? Steven Iceberg. Time, 
When's the last time? She, yeah. Oh, Steven Iceberg. That's, <laughs> that's a pretty Martin, big name. Martin but... Score CC. <laughs> oh fuck! Wow, that's that's a pretty big deal. Although honestly, when's the last time uh, Steven Iceberg put out a big movie that everyone cared about? Uh. Well, people like West Side Story. <laughs> Sorry, West C Story. <laughs> You're just replacing things with C, Swanson. You can't well, just... it seems to be working. <laughs> yeah, West, tra- West C Story. Ocean pretty... Lincoln. <laughs> oh, my Barry. God. It Is was... that what you people want? <laughs> it was so sad Pick... when Ocean Lincoln was assassinated. <laughs> now, how do you feel about Paul Thomas Anchovy, son? Oh, okay. There we go. How you, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that one, Stare? I like that one. I like honestly, that one a lot. honestly, not that familiar with his work. <laughs> I I've heard the yeah. name. Yeah, he re- he made Resident Evil. No, that's a different. We're talking about the one. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the one who made There Will Be uh, Blood. Blubber. There will be blubber. <laughs> I'm so sorry for everyone listening to this. I have no idea what you're going on about now. <laughs> you've never seen, uh, you've never seen bl- Blubber Nights. <laughs> we should watch that with Mark with Mark Wal my Mark Walrisberg. <laughs> I mean. I've seen There Will Be Chum, but ne- not There Oh, be- oh there okay. we go. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. No country for old merman. <laughs> <laughs> Call it merman. Yeah, that's a, that's a classic film. Love it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they're going to be helping keep it all together. Uh... They even released a statement that sounds like it was written by someone who didn't have just have a conversation with the much reviled CEO of Warner Brothers. This unique arrangement, initiated by David Zaslav, reflects his commitment to honoring the TCM legacy, while also involving us on curation and programming. The statement continued, We are thrilled that longtime programmer uh, name Nameson will be staying with uh, Turner Classic Movies and gratified to know that the team is focused on preserving this show, this channel's mission of celebrating our rich movie history, while at the same time ensuring that future generations of filmmakers and film lovers have it as a valuable resource. Sounds like a gun was like pointed at one of their heads when they wrote that. Yeah, it sounds like they used. Um... Chat GPC to uh, to generate uh-huh. that message. Yeah, and uh, you know the future. Well, that's why pretty... they love AI so much. It's because they talk exactly like it. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the so for now, Turner Classic Movies will remain. But as with all cable channels, the future remains bleak. In fact, I feel like I haven't. I mean, obviously, I don't have cable because I'm not a, a freak. I'm not a psycho, but um, or old. But uh, I feel like Turner Classic Movies might be the only cable channel that's still that isn't playing like just nonstop blocks of the same show every weekday. Like at least it's it's like it's actually, literally the last. Cable it, channel. it might it might as well be because I feel like every other thing is just playing like it's just like. Jackass, or yeah, it's like ridiculousness and like South some, Park reruns. And some like, show you've never heard of, but it's like in the top fifty most liked on Facebook. Yeah, it's watched solely by people in Arkansas, and Oklahoma, <laughs> yeah. and then like reruns of Roseanne. So I mean, good on them, and I hope they can continue for a while, uh, or just you know make it like a streaming, like make it like a branch of. Of, of Max. They won't do that, of course, but, you know, you could. They're too scared. Too scared. Too afraid. Sad. Uh, Alright, so I do have another news item here, and I gotta warn you guys, it's intense. 
Like it's, let me just say, I'll, I'll just be up front with you guys. There's a cost to this news, news story. We have what to pay a great price to, pay. to, okay, well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out. Huh? What do you, what do you mean? How much do we have to pay? I mean, it's just like, it's like, there's a, like a mental cost. Yeah, I'm going to pass on this one. I don't think, I'm pretty happy where I'm at right now. We can, we can move on. I don't know. I mean, guys, I'm just telling minute. you, it's like a, it's a big story. You're going to want to hear it. It's just that there's a lot. No. Like, it's pretty messed up. <sighs> yeah, Stairmaster's sleepy. All right, well, I guess I guess we'll move on then. Uh, I, I guess it's time for our main event. Yeah. That's right. We watch a show, and now we're going to talk about it. Fubar, Fubar is the is Arnold Schwarzenegger's first leading role in a live action television series. The program follows Luke Bruner and his daughter Emma, uh, who reveal who find out that they have lied to each other for years, as neither of them knew that the other was a CIA operative. Now that they both learned the truth, they realize that they do not actually know anything about each other while on a mission that might endanger both of their lives. Did Fubar? F- fuck you up, or did it leave you in <laughs> one in usable condition? Blue balls. Yeah. What yeah, a, what so a this program. Is, um, now, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, former we, f- former TV star, I guess current TV star. <laughs> former uh, friend of the show. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone have, have, had a, have had a long going feud for a while. I don't know if it's still a thing, really. It was in the eighties, but uh, the, this, the two of they them, this up. feels like them going at it again. Because we had Tulsa King not that long ago, last at the end of last year, and now we got Fubar. <laughs> it feels like they're. It feels like the heyday again. How long is it going to be before Arnold gets Sylvester Stallone to star in something shitty? I feel like they've already done that. Like, remember Escape Plan? Well, then they then they star in that together. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I'm thinking of like a stop or my mom will shoot situation. Oh, who knows? Now, for Keo and those at home who might not know, there's an infamous story that uh, in the height of their sort of rivalry with one another, uh, Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger thought that Sylvester Stallone was just bidding for roles that he was a part of after he heard that Arnold would be involved to try and sort of take them out from under him. <laughs> and so he had read this script called Stop or My Mom Will Shoot about a police officer and his mom. <laughs> and Arnold knew that the script was dog shit, but he let it get out to the press that he was interested. And Sylvester Stallone auditioned for the part and got it. And Arnold backed out. <laughs> So, so, <laughs> so Sylvester Stallone was stuck playing in this shitty movie. That's uh, incredible. That's crazy. Like, I think we can say that Sylvester Stallone had more talent than Arnold, and yet he had such innumerably worse business yeah. sense. This is a sense of what movie. I think he in general in. acting ability, he's better than Arnold. But Sylvester Stallone cannot be funny in the way that Arnold Schwarzenegger can. Yeah, but he also made Rocky. That's what I mean. And he's oh, he's also a way better. He's also a director, which is not something that Arnold Schwarzenegger yes. is. Um, and you know, we'll we can dissect what we thought of the two shows uh, in a bit. But right now, let's focus on. I I can't yeah. imagine being that petty that you would. <laughs> How many decades later, decide that you needed to star in your own garbage TV show because this now, other to guy be clear, did, yeah, no, did a I show? Think he just needs bag. Yeah, to be clear, I don't think it has anything to do with each other having shows. It's just like a happy coincidence. I think they were both in development around the same time, and it was just something that happened like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's more like Netflix or Paramount Plus was doing a show with Stallone. Yeah, and they were like, "Let's get on, let's get on that. the Arnold train." Now, Arnold already had a deal with Netflix because he has that documentary that came out about him that I've heard is pretty good. 
but uh as for foobar hmm uh so yeah this is a show that involves arnold schwarzenegger uh playing a 65 year old man t- 10 years his junior <laughs> Uh, and you can tell that he moves around like a 70-year-old man. Uh, this is like that one scene in The Irishman where Robert De Niro is beating a guy up where you can just tell that he's old. Yeah, but we made a TV show right. about it. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Luke Bruner. He's a CIA officer. He's essentially every Arnold character you've ever met, but now he's old. Um, we meet this guy... Uh, he's yeah. also every every secret agent, uh, wacky guy character I've ever seen, just True. with Arnold's yeah. voice. Well, and you know he's an Arnold character because he's smoking a stogie. First thing, first thing we see, first appearance of him, stogie in his mouth. Yeah, so he's doing this complicated heist that involves him doing arson. Yeah, and meanwhile he's arguing with his friend Barry. About uh, about putting the crunchies in the ice cream cake or whatever. I told you I put the crunchies in the cake. And it goes on like that. It goes yeah, that's on like fun. that. But uh, I I got tired of it after uh, uh, thirty <laughs> seconds. Um, yeah, I will say that uh, Barry reveals himself to be kind of a despicable asshole later. <laughs> <laughs> But for now, he's uh, he's a he's a fun loving guy who likes Thundercats. Um, I guess a thirty eight year old would like Thundercats. That tracks. Maybe. Is it a joke to say that a thing is a reference to an old yes. thing? Well, no. it is if you're the writers of this show, because they do it a couple times. By the way, uh, this show uh, created and produced by the people who made Reacher, another episode of the pod. Wait, we watched Reacher on this? Did we not? No, no. We wait. Yeah, we did. I don't think we did. No, we did. Yeah, did we, we did. Oh, Shinkyo, did we watch Reacher? Starring yeah, we Jack watched, Reacher. Uh, Reacher, the biggest man. Yeah, we watched the Reacher. Yeah, he, oh, wait, he has no, very long we arms. Reacher. He can reach things on the. No, we watched um, <laughs> not Reacher. What's the one with the guy from The Office? Jack Ryan. Oh, Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. Totally different. <laughs> oh, way less cool. Probably. Um, Certainly. But yeah, this is uh, made by him and directed by a guy who's done a few episodes of The Sopranos. You couldn't see it on screen, that's for sure. I mean, look. Yeah? You can I mean, he was kind of just set up to fail, I think, with this one. Listen, uh, I'll, I'll just go through it real quick. We don't even have to go by the blow by blow because it's kind of it's a lot. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a CIA operative. He's got a loser son who shows up for two seconds. He's got a daughter that he adores. He's got an ex-wife who has who we don't know right away is his ex-wife. They introduce her, and you're like, "Oh, okay, these people are. What are these people?" Do? We don't What's watch- this relationship like? And then she just says at one reason at one point, "That's one of the reasons I divorced him." Yeah, uh, the uh, script for this program is paper thin, and a lot of the <laughs> uh, a lot of the dialogue is just highly you're very, expository. You're being very generous because I would just say it's dog shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Half of the scenes um, are just, if they're not quip, quippy jokes with unfunny people, it's people expositing mm-hmm. to Arnold while he stands there and goes, wow. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that sounds bad. Wow. Oh. I already knew that. Let me tell you something that you already <laughs> know too. Let me be mad at my daughter despite us having the same exact job. Um... No, you don't get it. It's, it's flesh and blood. It's the child who wasn't a fuck up. It's true. I just like these scenes where they expose it to each other and then they make, like, they, they summarize the <laughs> thing they just exposited to each other and draw conclusions from it that. Listen, uh, Dad, are we've got to go obvious. get McGuffin, okay? 
All right, I told you we are going to give me coffin drive. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's scheduled to retire, and he gets pulled back in because an agent is missing. Um, also, at his retirement, he pulls out a photo of, of the SS Get My Wife Back. <laughs> Which is a boat that he, what's the, what's he stole the, from somebody that the government stole. What's the, what's the name of the ship from... What's the... McBain. What's the name of the ship from McBain that his partner has? The SS has? Live Forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's essentially that. Like, I can't believe they literally just pulled the McBain joke and had him be like, this is my boat. Simulacra, man. Simulacra. Yeah. No, no longer any bearing... To the original entity. So here's my main problem with uh, the show is that it shows up right in this scene where he's retiring, which is he has these two dopey ass dweeb motherfuckers who hang out with him. <laughs> yeah. You only need one dope. It's true. The fact that there's two of them actually does make it more insufferable. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly lazy and it, it, it takes you out of. I think the biggest thing that's that's a problem with having two dweeb characters is that these are supposed to be like, <laughs> I don't know, professionals. Like in True Lies, Arnie has Bill Paxton in the corner and he has that other guy. Yeah. Who pretends to be a journalist at the end and then pulls a gun out of the camera and kills a bunch of terrorists. I'm just saying, it's not really setting appropriate. Oh yeah, True like... Lies, available on Amazon Prime. You should watch that. Oh Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying though? When I'm saying like these characters don't fit in with no. like the setting of, <laughs> yes. of being like CIA operatives. Why do I need these two? What do, yeah. what do these two even do? I mean, like, <laughs> if right. you're gonna have like a dwee, if you're gonna have a yeah, they're just kind of there, right? Like they're not doing anything. The opening of the episode the is Arnold and Barry doing their thing, just the two of them, and it seems to work fine. Yeah, they like. Yeah. If you're going to have a dweeb character in this kind of setting, it's it's got to be, like, somebody who's, you know, like, highly skilled. Like Barry. And, and yeah, like, yeah. Like, highly skilled like Barry, but has some kind of social awkwardness, but you, you move past it because they're so good at yeah. their job. That's the only way right. they could exist in that setting. Well, you see, it's what you want for the vibes as well. Right. Like, he, that, don't he have... vibes with Arnie, but, like... The douchebag number one and douchebag number two do not feel like they should be in the same. Well, another reason it doesn't work. Media entity as Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Well, yes, 100%. It's also the other reason it doesn't work for me is that the two of them are cracking jokes, but Arnold doesn't have communication with them. He only talks to Barry. And so these two are just like cracking jokes that left and weird. right. And we don't get nothing from Arnold about it. Yeah, it's sort of like, uh, who was it, Pat and Oswald or whoever, who talked about the punch-up sessions for uh, that Will Smith fish movie? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. How they would just add in jokes. Shark Tale. And then they would just add, after the primary animation had been done, and then they would just add that on top of the scene. <laughs> oh, that sounds so... Is is that why that that film was so, like, yes. noisy yes. and... Yeah, that's sort of that's sort of what this feels like. That's a super superfluous. It definitely feels like the two the two characters were created because they had like too many jokes, and they were just like, we can't have them all. Or tell because these jokes. the episode yeah. wasn't long, the episode wasn't long it, enough. Yeah. Okay, how would you guys feel if throughout the program, as these people are being obnoxious, Barry gets increasingly furious <laughs> with them? And... Yeah. <laughs> It just isn't is not happening. Well, that yet. seems like a three AM Adult Swim type <laughs> one off. Well, that <laughs> right there. That, I think there's something to Stair's theory that they didn't have enough time in the episode because they do ruin the flow of Arnold's scenes because they keep cutting to these fucking dweebs. Like Arnold is having this scene with the with the Boro guy, the arms dealer, and they keep cutting back to these guys. I don't need it. That's not. Yeah, this is supposed to be a very tense scene where he's meeting the gener- the vague ex- paramilitary leader, who they never talk about his politics. They, they have an actual peanut gallery. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they have... Can we talk about this bad... They have the CIA we version of, we- of Statler and Waldorf in the back. Uh, yeah, but Statler and Waldorf were funny. Well, yeah, that's why... I, I mean, do you think the CIA versions will be funny? 
No. <laughs> they would be even less socially function. Like they would be even deeper yeah, I- on the spectrum than Barry or us. This show, this show is is kind of simulating like watching a show with your obnoxious relative. Speaking of simulating, you can't shut up. Yeah, can we talk about the bad guy Boro? Like played by Gabriel Luna of all people, slumming it. In how this. vague, how vague his entire thing is. Like he's a leader of an ex pilim. He's a leader of a paramilitary group, quote unquote. Yeah. What? But he's a wet. And he's his a wacky dad. Guy. They don't say some, also, why he's. A, yeah, his dad was some guy. They don't say why the paramilitary group exists. Right. They don't say what they're doing. What their ideological they, goal is. They just sell weapons for the sake of it, apparently. But they don't call him a gun dealer either. No. And he's he's a he's a highly driven guy. This guy does uh, not seem like a to... communist, so I gotta assume that the CIA set his dad up. <laughs> he seems to just be be. Loyal to his father, but we don't hear anything about why that would be. His father, he just like who a, Arnie killed like twenty years ago, yeah. prior to the show, right? And he 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 dedicated his life to following in his footsteps for some but reason. We don't know what the footsteps are. And twenty years ago would have been a weird time to kill somebody in South America. Yeah, that would have been like oh, maybe there maybe it's a reference to the Arnie film Collateral, which came out in two thousand two. Oh. 20 years ago. Was that ago. the last film he made before he ran for governor? Yeah. No, Terminator 3 oh, came yeah, after yeah. that. Of course. Um, I don't know about the film timeline, right. maybe. But even... Um, that's the thing with having these two weird weirdos around, right? And this vague bad guy. Oh, okay. No, I, I'm. Don't worry. I'm talking about the bad guy too. No, I just, I just, I'm just saying. Wow, it's incredible how much more attention they get from us than the quote unquote antagonist. Oh, yeah. Well, they fo- <laughs> they give more focus, really. Um, but the thing is that, like, what we learn. When Ar- when we get to the actual setup of the episode, which is that uh, Arnold's character and his daughter are both CIA operatives. His daughter is the one that he's going to save, and Barry has just been sitting on that secret. Is that you could mine that for some good potential drama or even comedy, but Barry has to deal with the yeah, peanut like gallery. have scenes where Arnie. Yeah, you could cut those guys out, have scenes where Arnie, where Barry's trying to tell Arnie to do something, but Arnie doesn't trust Barry anymore. Right. So he does something else, and that creates problems. And by having him have to bounce off these two, no. Barry seems like more of an asshole, because he can't he can't explain why he didn't tell him. <laughs> and they make fun of him for it, even though he's got to be utterly torn up about lying to his best yeah. friend. For over a decade. He and doesn't, a half. like, the reasoning he has for why he lied about it doesn't really track unless it's just, like, it's it tracks in the sense that, like, if it were an action movie, you would just move along because there would be an action scene coming up or something. But because it's a TV show, him just saying, like, I didn't, he couldn't be distracted in the line of duty is just, like, doesn't make sense. You don't, I, like, you think about it differently when you're focus- when you're supposed to be following these characters for longer than two hours. But w- when he gives that response, uh, they don't go like, wow, you've really messed up the operation and, and you're getting formally reprimanded and we're reporting you to the big boss. They're just like, hey, what a wacky They might as well situation. just made a fart noise when he mentioned it. <laughs> Pretty Which much. Which again, I, you gotta... They, the people making the show had to know it would be compared to True Lies, right? It's very True Lies, yeah. I mean, I'm going to do one more. It's almost as bad as the True Lies show we watch. <laughs> At least they had a helicopter in the True Lies True. show. Um, at least they didn't have to resort to CGI for when our, when their lead character got into a fight scene. <laughs> Uh, but Arnold and his daughter, uh, they're immediately mad at each other, and they try to explain why she has, this feels the way she does later, and it kind of almost works. But the real reason is because it's funny to have them at odds with each other. And their dynamic kind of works near the end for me a little bit, but it's just like, 
again, that I need more funny Arnold, and I don't get enough of it. It just feels like bickering to me. It just feels like... Yeah, Arnie needs really fun. There's angry. one fun scene where he goes into his daughter's hovel, where she's been staying. Oh, yes. And just starts going through her yeah. stuff. <laughs> and he finds a vibrator. He finds, he, yeah, he finds a weird, conspicuously placed lipstick. And I, I thought it was going to be like a spy gadget. But then it just starts yeah. vibrating. <laughs> and Arnie does like a perfect. He's like, oh, it, it's it is vibrating. In the oh, no. Oh, oh my, daughter is, oh. my daughter is a sexual being. <laughs> How could this have oh, happened? No. What a dark revelation, I, I feel <laughs> Like, for no, it's, I can't understand how this is, like, one of the best performances Arnie's done. Yeah. There's also, um, there's a fun, there's the funny scene where they go to meet the person that they're going to execute, and he just runs them over, and then backs up over them. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. There's, when it's just the two of them, it is, it kind of works. Yeah, so that's why I was like, I was watching them together, and I was like, you know, I think this could be a hangover show. But then you remind me of the Dweeb Squad, right. and I'm like, ah, uh. like someone needs to come in and kill them to up the yeah. stakes. That's the only way you can save the show. It, it, it takes a little bit of a feeling out process too, because I did have to think for a second. Like, <laughs> I'm just picturing just at the end of the episode, <laughs> just somebody. <laughs> Somebody walks in and it's just <laughs> just immediately murders both of them. Yeah, I'd be cheering. They'd be my new favorite character. Oh yeah, they get like they get like got like night agent style. Oh yeah, perfect. Whatever the night caller, whatever the no, fuck it was called, right, night agent. <laughs> but Bar- Barry's yeah, fine. Barry's the one who yeah. escapes, and then he finds out the CIA's yeah. compromised. Now that is a show right there. I would, I would actually find that to be really funny, and, and like unironically, if if like they like they were just having a good quip quip off, and then a guy walks in and just completely. Well, that's the, the thing. I love yeah. that sort of dark. We get some of that with when Arnold runs over the person, or after he has the dance with his daughter. After that man's been shot in the face, the guy. The scene ends with a guy pouring water over the blood stain on the on the stage. And yes. That's pretty funny too. There's an Amazon Prime show that got canceled after two seasons called Patriot. I don't know if you heard of this one. You might have brought this up which, to me before. Which is a which is a black spy comedy about this super agent guy who's PTSD ridden, and his dad who also works at the CIA as a higher up, and he sent him on this caper to bribe to influence an Iranian election, and this goes wrong. Like in a Coen Brothers esque manner. Oh, sounds great. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of black comedy in that. And <laughs> yeah, I think what I'm saying is this show should have been more like yes. that. Yeah, I think you guys are onto something here. It where also, it should be. It also opens with him pushing a guy in front of a bus in order to get a job at a pipe factory. It should be a, as a senior. It engineer. should be a, like a dark comedy night agent. Yeah. Kill these two dweebs. Have have Barry be like the CIA is compromised and now they have to like, figure out what's going on in the grand conspiracy. Also, I don't think Arnie should be doing stunts. I'm yeah, sorry. he should definitely not. This is the reason why he has the daughter in the first place. Have her do the action scenes. We already saw her do a capable like you can have a... fight. Oh yeah, that was a fight. She was in a yeah. She was doing blood yeah. sport. We already saw her saw her do that. Like yeah, I. I really think that, that the uh, killing them off works because uh, we get the strong impression that the writers like these characters and they're going to be here for a long yeah. time. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it would it would it would be a great uh, a great addition to this pro- program if they just <laughs> were unceremoniously killed off at the like in the episode. But or yeah, something. they um, they kill their target and then they make the mistake of burying them in a rice paddy. Well, that's not. That's not their target. He was going to out the oh, daughter. That's, right. that's why Arnie got called yeah. in. <laughs> Which we skipped over to hate the hate on the dweeb duo. Rightfully. The dork duo. Um, but yeah, the, the, the unfortunately, the episode ends with some truly horrendous CGI. Like... Yeah, there's a car chase. 
Yeah, there's a there's a car chase, and Arnold decides to jump onto the car that's chasing them. Uh, and, which I cannot believe, even at 65, which is characteristic. Yeah, that man blew out his knees. and Yeah, like at the start of the episode, he rolls off a fire truck, and I'm like, oh, he's not getting up for that for yeah. a while at his age. I don't care how much human growth hormone he's full of. Yeah, and uh, and that and that man is yeah, he, and this is a seventy year old man playing sixty something, um, which actually yeah. So he jumped on the jeep, throws a guy out of it, fist fights another guy, and then the jeep crashes, throwing them both. And the jeep, when the jeep, and the way it was shot, I thought it was going to impale the guy on the tree that was coming yeah. up. Yeah, Logan style. So I was very disappointed he didn't do that. Yeah, um, that's the irony I'm here for. Yeah, instead what we get is they they bounce off the jeep with some truly awful some like some of the worst cgi i've seen in a while and then he could have said something like i guess that wasn't the giving tree right. he's he only has one real arnold one-liner and it's at the beginning when they blow up the guy with a drone strike and he's like so you you get the location of my boss oh yeah he's, like, he's all over the place 100%. Yeah, that is Trep kisses. But he needs more of that. He needs to, you know, when he stabs that guy, he should be doing a one when when his totters in the cow, he should be doing some a one liner being like, "Don't have a cow, man." <laughs> yeah. And they all do the Bartman or something, I don't know. <laughs> but um I I caramba. I caramba. Eat my shorts. But yeah, um, the episode That'd ends be with they're show, surrounded. Even though I would be, I would, I'd be upset that they're just making references. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 at least uh, him doing it in a funny voice. Uh, the episode also quickly makes Gabriel Luna's arms dealer character vacillate between like calm and psychotic. Which is kind of, why not? It's just that he turns on Arnold so quick. <laughs> well, the timing is very, un- very incriminating. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, they get after, they get uh, surrounded by his men at the end of the episode. And uh, that's, that, that's that, more or less. It's a cliffhanger. It's a cliffhanger. We just needed, like, what it should have been was at the very end, right before the credits roll, Arnold should have just been, the situation is foobah. Yeah, and then Barry comes in. (laughs) Different Barry. (laughs) Yes, Barry Berkman comes in and kills them all. Barry Berkman comes in. Oh, wow. Shoots them all. (laughs) Um, But yeah, he... um, It's the end of the episode, pretty much. Uh, I feel like I know where this is treading, but guys, final thoughts? I was like I said I was gonna say this is sort of like a hangover show, but on retrospect, nah. Yeah, I think parts of it work, but the parts of it are less than the like less in the total runtime than the parts that don't work. And I feel like this is at least ten years too late. Yeah, if this were like an original, like when Netflix was just making starting making original shows type of move type of move, yeah then people would love it. But, yeah, it's going to be a tune-out for me, I think. I'm sorry, yeah, Arnie. sorry, Arnold. <laughs> this is a very, very uh, hard tune-out for me. Yeah, go watch True Lies instead. The yeah, the movie. movie. Hell available on Amazon Prime. Sure. They'll be also tuned out on. That's a that's an order to you, Kyo. So that's a tune-out on Whoa. FUBA. But I've got to ask, guys, before we wrap things up for the week. Tulsa King or Fubar, which one you think? Now, we tuned, technically tuned out on both of them. But which would which would you say Ooh. is the show? If you had to pick one. Best of the worst. Yeah, which is the best of the two? Who won? Okay, well, I thought that Tulsa King was was a lot funnier I think, than I this. Think, I think he has around on the right level like i think tulsa king is more consistent yeah entertaining. tulsa king has like the rancid sort of like boomer vibe to it <laughs> but it's funnier and more well engaging. this is sort of i feel like this show doesn't have the conviction to have a rancid or a 
like Tulsa King yeah. does. It's sort of gutless, right. one might I think say. Tulsa King, I think Tulsa King's the better show of the two. I would personally say don't bother with either, Tulsa King but if, has... you wanna, if you need your 80s action hero fix, Tulsa King is the better option, I think. It has this like hilarious, out of touch with reality, power fantasy energy to it that is entertaining if you, you know, you're not trying to watch it seriously, if you're not trying to really take this, take the events of Tulsa right. King in there. And also, yes. if you kind of don't want to watch it for like 10 hours or however long the this episodes show, are. Cause yeah, this show feels like it asks you to take it more seriously than Tulsa King. Yeah, true. Probably because there's a literal Somehow, nuke that even, they're trying to get. Even with the peanut gallery, they're still supposed to take it seriously somehow. Yeah, it it tries to take, like, it takes the action more serious, too, because it's trying to be more Arnold of old action. Well, so Stallone seems to know his limit in terms of what he can do action-wise, so he just punches people in the face. So yeah, I, I would definitely go with Tulsa King over this uh, every time. At least the the first episode of Tulsa King over the yeah. first episode of this. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a. Uh, or you could watch Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Who would who would Arnold Schwarzenegger play in that? Do you think? Uh, he would play like. He would play like the. Uh, like when the nobles revolt. Like when the Kaiser dies and the Empire is split between the noble faction and uh, Reinhardt's reformer faction. Like the nobles have this burly guy who's like the man at arms expert, which is an utter barbarian with the space axe. He would play him. All right. I don't remember. I'm going to give a strong recommendation to the C Lab 2020 <laughs> show. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, anyway, there there you have it, folks. And not to be confused with C-Lab 2021. Right, the original, which you watched along with Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. I compared and contrasted. They're very um, similar. Well, listen, that'll about do it for this week's episode of the show. If you're listening, though, and you're like, hey, what if I had a show that I want them to watch? Or a movie? Perhaps something else. Well, all you got to do is go over to buymeacoffee.com slash TV tuners. A single coffee will give you a single episode for us to discuss anything you desire. Uh, that's all you got to do. As for next week, well, we're back at it again, folks. It's another season of Black Mirror, and we're going to cover it. Will there be any weird sexual politics going on? We'll find out next week. Until then... And if not, me and me and Keel will make some of our own until then when we're Ooh. staring in the mirror and the mirror turns out to be our phone or some shit keep <laughs> watching <laughs> bye it's over I found him uh, hey folks it's time for the uh, TV tuners fact of the week uh, did you know that Stairmaster is afraid of boiling hot water pouring over his head? It hurts! It hurts! It hurts! <laughs> <laughs>